Helen, thanks for joining us on The World Now. We begin with the current development under the Global Watch. The United States and the United Kingdom have for a second day struck another Udi rebel-controlled site in Yemen. In this latest strike, a U.S. ship fired missiles at a radar site with the nation calling it a follow-up action designed to degrade the UDA's ability to attack maritime vessels, including oil vessels, uh, strategic to the development of the nations. The fighters have vowed a strong and effective response to the attack. The rebels also say there were no injuries but maintain they will react strongly the United Kingdom government says for the disruptions of oil vessels by the rebels could hit the economy. Well, for more on this situation, I have uh, joining me international affairs analyst Uria Fanceli, who joins me uh, via Zoom from the Brazilian capital. Glad to have you join us on the news at this time. It's nice to be here. Well, since uh, the war began, we have seen that uh, Israel ignoring pleas to, you know, cease fire and also seek negotiations. But do you think there is any danger that this could, you know, escalate to a much wider war in the Middle East? Well, I think there's a risk of a, wide, a wider war from different fronts since it all started. Uh, we've been looking a lot of the attacks that are exchanged between Israel and uh, groups uh, such as Hezbollah in Lebanon and groups in Syria as well. The Houthis, they have been, um, they have been present also since maybe November last year. Uh, and F but they, they became more present since uh, maybe a, a few weeks ago when they started to bomb ships. Uh, and, and then, of course, this will bring more consequences because the the areas that uh, is near Yemen, where the Houthis control most of the country, uh, it receives uh, more than maybe 15, 20 percent of the world's total ships. And then it, it of course, bothers most of the countries, uh, Western countries, because uh, you have economical consequences. Um, but I, I don't see at this point how these, these attacks should, um, it's maybe it's too soon to say that it will escalate the war. Um, let's talk about uh, the purported basis of uh, this attack, where the Udis in Yemen are saying that Israel is committing a genocide, which is in violation of the 1948 uh, you know, Genocide Convention. But with the Udis vowing that U.S. and U.K. strikes on their position in Yemen will not go unpunished. Do you think the world is ready to, you know, contain another escalation? Um, it's, I, again, it's very difficult to, to say that what we saw with the UK and then the US bombardments in, in, in Yemen, it's mainly to send a message to the Houthis. Uh, it was leaked that these attacks were going to happen. So the Houthis, they had a lot of time to prepared to try to spread their weapons around the country. So um, it, it's possible that not most of the, the weapons, the anti-ship tanks that they have were hit, but um, it, it was a way to send a message. And again, the Houthis are getting what they wanted from the beginning, which is to send them word the message that they support the Palestine cause. And they sent this message to the Arab nations and even those nations like Saudi Arabia that uh, had problems, they had conflicts with the Houthis uh, in the past, they are not in a position where they can s uh, send a message of support because because of their own conflicts with with, with the Houthis. So it's it's a very it's a very complex uh, international chess happening in the Middle East right now. Mm. Uh, but, Mr. Francelli, many believe that the Yemen army is only, you know, trying to put pressure on Israel in order to stop the killing in Gaza. But what is uh, the justification of uh, the United States and the United Kingdom of launching an attack in Yemen? Does this not, you know, indicate an, is an interest in uh, the fight with Israel? 
Absolutely. It, it shows uh, mostly an economical interest, of course, that uh, most of the, the the fire that has been exchanged between Hamas in, in Gaza and Israel only involved mainly these two actors. I mean, uh, the, the Palestinian uh, radical organization, which is Hamas and Israel. But from the moment that attacks they have as, as their, their target, international ships, such as a Norwegian ship that was hit, and that's uh, clearly the West sending a message that we're not, uh, don't step on our toes. You can't get us involved in that. And that's, uh, that brings this, this war to uh, affect the, the entire global economy. So uh, it's, it's a way to send a message that they don't want to be dragged into this. Mm. So the, the war seems to be escalating and except we just want to, you know, turn a blind eye to it, it is extending beyond um, Israel, extending beyond Gaza. And we also know that there is another war going on in uh, Russia and Ukraine. But um, is negotiation out of the point at this time? Well, I think we always have to be open to the possibility of negotiation. But I think when those attacks happened in Israel uh, on the 7th of October last year, it, uh, it broke like a social contract that the state of Israel had, that it was the only safe haven, safe place in the world for the Jews, uh, because they suffered from uh, a genocide in the last century. So uh, I don't see how... Um, I mean, Israel was reminded that Hamas was created to destroy the state of Israel. So I don't think that in the short term there's a, a, a diplomatic solution coming, even though it's being discussed, even though we see, for example, South Africa trying to take it to the International uh, Court of Justice so uh, this war stops. Um, I, don't, I don't think a diplomatic solution is uh, in sight for the shorter term, but we always have to at least hope for that. Even even despite the the war crimes that Israel seems to be committing against uh, the Palestinian people, that and most of them are innocent. Mm. Well, it seems that there is a possibility of the international court ruling against Israel with the number of you know, civilian casualties and also at the number of children affected. But then, to your own opinion, in your own opinion, do you see the table actually turning against Israel? I think we can say that the table would turn against Israel when the, its major supporters, its largest supporters, I mean, the U.S. and the European countries, they start to put pressure on Israel they have been doing a little bit, but not enough. So Israel can reduce its casualties uh, against innocent people. Uh, I don't think, uh, and even if the International Court of Justice decides to condemn Israel and decide, uh, decide that it should stop its attacks, uh, it's not a, it doesn't have a binding effect because the court doesn't have a way, it doesn't have its own police, so it can't oblige Israel to do that. So um, a way that Israel uh, to be, a, a way to force Israel to do that only could come from the United Nations Security Council. But we saw that the council is completely split, it's divided, with mostly China and Russia uh, taking a more Hamas stance or maybe a more Palestinian coal stance and France, the UK and the, the United States with a more pro-Israel, um, taking a more Israeli side. And that's the only body in the world that could try to force something, but it's divided. So um, maybe, but the fact that this, this conflict is being discussed in an international court, it, uh, uh, I think it's a, a win for multilateralism. So in the end, it's, it's, it's good that it's being discussed uh, diplomatically somewhere. 
I agree with you perfectly on that. But let's also talk about um, the role of mindsets in negotiations at this time. With the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin insisting that it will not end this war until Hamas is wiped out. Do you believe that this may have played a role in the success of negotiations? Um, I think something that is at stake as well is Benjamin Netanyahu's own survival politically. We have to remember that before it all began, before even before the, seven, the October 7 attacks, he was for many months being the target of protests all over Israel. So uh, he, he, the fact that these attacks happened during his government, someone who was threatening the democracy in Israel and, and was the reason for such a, a, a large social upheaval in, in the country. Uh, he, he doesn't have any other alternative but to try to uh, end Hamas because uh, if he fails to, if he fails his, his objectives of uh, revenge, uh, he will be r responsible. He will be blamed for everything that went wrong. And when I say everything that went wrong, I mean since the attacks on October 7th, uh, but also the, the Israeli casualties that are, they are much smaller than the, the Palestinian lives that are being lost in Gaza. But again, even if it's a minority, it's also Israeli lives that uh, are being lost according to the population, of course. Uh, and he would also be charged by, uh, I believe, uh, all those corruption accusations that he's been suffering. Uh, so his own future is at stake. That's why uh, he won't, uh, I believe, um, soft, soften his position. Mm. Well, International Affairs Analyst Raf and Shelley speaking to us uh, live from the Brazilian capital. Thank you for joining us on The World Now at this time. Thank you. You're still watching The World Now on TVC News. We'll be back with more stories around the world after this break. Stay with us.